Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Special guest in the building this morning. Yeah. He's like the man of the hour right now, right? Yeah. Meek Mill. He, he, uh, yeah. uh, God is blessed to trap with 216,000 the first week. Congratulations, yeah. number one album. Yeah, I'm feeling good. We back in the building. Yes. <laughs> How it it's feel, 216, bro? the streaming number two, man. Give me my real number. Well, what's the what's real the number? What's, what's everything combined? Like 5,000 more, right? but still, I want all that. <laughs> <laughs> what was you expected? What was the what, what was the bet? That, though. Like 200 mm-hmm. plus? Yeah, or, 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 250. Or, or, or. 300. Right. But you know what's good about it also is that a lot of people seem to really like the album. Sometimes those sales go down a lot, but it feels like, you know, pretty solid. Everybody. Yeah, I wanted it. to make an album, though. I ain't really no numbers type dude. I wanted to make an mm-hmm. album that was so hot that even if it ain't do numbers, it's still in the streets. So, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, my, my dudes was just in here, Jesus and Merrill. They said they haven't heard the album yet, but they said it's classic based off the <laughs> intro. Based <laughs> off the <laughs> intro from the first album. <laughs> <Dang. laughs> Yeah, hell yeah, that was a nice setup, a three-year setup record. Did you think the intro was going to last three years? Yeah, I be thinking all that shit going to last that long. <laughs> the intro, it, really, that, that intro is, is classic. The intro That's ended up being the biggest record on the whole album. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just when you be saying certain things, like uh, certain songs just touch you in certain ways, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like what? that one song, Young Dog, I don't fuck with these chickens because they shady. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Certain things you're saying going to stick to people. But, and they gonna stay. But people want the uh, intro part too. You know what I mean? It's like you, you do you always have to do like a, a intro type of record now? Was it no, pressure? I ain't do one just now though. I ain't wanna do one just now. I ain't trying to do I got one that's structured just like the old uh intro. So you know I just did not, something new. Lord knows Lord featuring knows. Tory Lanez. You know, <laughs> try something different. This album feels a little different too. I feel like um, hmm. there's a lot of songs for the ladies on here. Yeah, I'm living a ladies' life a little bit. I mean, like <laughs> I mean, I could talk about it now. No, I like that. I ain't though. Just talking about ripping holes and I mean, it's mm-hmm. gonna be a little different this time. That's interesting because I remember last your first album, you were saying you was gonna get Wale to write a lot of your love songs. No, never write. <laughs> Not write, but no. help you with some <laughs> of your love it. songs. But now <laughs> let's get that clear. Me, Melly be writing his. Yeah, yeah, you, man, <laughs> help you with some love songs, but now you can make your own. Yeah, of course. But Wale, he always in the studio with me too, giving up some little one twos. You know, he great at that ladies single. Yeah, yeah a few you plan on. You also said before you went to jail, it was a different album than when you came home. Yeah, yeah, I changed a lot. You know what I'm saying? When I came home, uh, I started grinding. I had more to talk about. I started getting features. You know what I mean? Putting things together. You know, just taking it to the next level. Was it darker? I what? mean, after you after you came out, was it darker? No, I think I I did uh, check when I came home. I did uh, jump out the face, a bunch of new joints. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was a few dark ones, but more 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 energy. Cause cold hearted sounds very dark. Yeah, that was before. That was right before. Oh, I went so you could tell the difference between the before ones. Yeah, <laughs> ambition as a rider, cold hearted, stand <laughs> all them dark joints. That was right before. That was before I went to jail. I was in a dark place. You look at life differently than when you came home? Huh? You look at life a lot differently when you came home? No, I don't look at life differently, but, you know, I move different. You know, I handle things different. I don't just be talking reckless no more. <laughs> Can't do five months again like that. Mm-hmm. What, what had you words. in a dark place? Huh? Was it the, the death of Snoop? or Like, what had you in such a dark place? Anything. Just life, though. When you got money, you're just dealing with real-life problems and stuff like that. You know, we come from places where there ain't no money. You be the only one. Nobody don't even ask if you're okay. They just, you know, you got, I need this out of my house. You know, we be dealing with a lot of stuff, so, you know, we the go-to men. Because people count your money. Y'all they on count, TV they, they and stuff. I know y'all the go-to people in y'all families. I do, yeah. 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 Fortunately, my family's not that big, so. I, <laughs> I said Some one people's brother. family ain't broke. You know, I came up with that. We came up broke as shit. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? When somebody sprinting, they'll make it to the millions, you know. Well, you just got to take care of your immediate circle, man. I say taking care of everybody is overrated. Yeah, no, not everybody. That's, that don't even. I don't even talk like that for everybody. Mm-hmm. That's like for like immediate. You know right. what I'm saying? But of course, you are gonna have some people that's gonna need some things that you might have to step in on. You know, the biggest money problems. I gotta step up to it. You know what I'm saying? Now you have a lot of people around you that you move with, and you clearly take care of them. Yeah, no, they take care. Well, of Well, I mean, you know, too. you take care, make sure everybody's good. Like everybody's yeah. working. Everybody's. Uh, have you had to be like, okay, at some point, I gotta think about like. Having this budget and sticking to this, like yeah, I don't give me money, and if you ain't really doing nothing, you know I mean? <laughs> if you ain't really doing nothing, then you know you can hang around a little bit and do your little one too. But mm-hmm. ain't no check coming that way, you know what I'm saying? But for the ones that is, 
It don't matter. You could be putting a phone on a charger any day. You could do anything. As long as you helping the day go out, you know, we accept and we out. Mm-hmm. Now, it was a rumor that uh, at one time they, people around you were charging people to take pictures with you. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's how they hustle. Right. That's not his money. That's their money. We, right? You know, dream chases, we a little different. We ain't just going to be sitting around like me and all my homies when we was 18, 19. We all had money at the same time. So, being as though I'm in the rap game, they ain't just going to be sitting around while I just make millions of dollars and just not make no money. I took you a picture get with backstage, me. People don't come backstage. My homie, he might let you backstage for four hundred. Wow. You, know, <laughs> you might get a picture. That's crazy. <laughs> Nikki, uh, you might see everything. You might get VIP access for that little twenty minutes. You know, I can't control them. That's the hustle. I took a picture with me. They the made DT like awards. a big thing out there, but like I be seeing people be having me and Greece for five hundred all day. Why they can't meet a trap nigga, a street <laughs> dude? You know what I'm saying? You said you took a picture. How much you charge? He charged me two fifty. Oh man, yeah, that was discount. Oh, nah, no, I'm probably. kidding. <laughs> the most one time I got a stack for a picture, like six in the morning. My homie came knocking on the door. Yo, somebody got a stack for a picture. Are you kidding me? I woke me? up, leaned out the door, took the picture, did back in, went to sleep. <laughs> was it a selfie or did you at least pose with the person? I think it was like a selfie, Jonas. Somebody took. It. Wow, right in the hotel, um, in the doorway of the in hotel Toronto room. Now, that on the like late a night, like five in the morning. It was crazy. People count your money a lot, though. That's what I was saying earlier. They, yeah. Everything that you do, your jets, your jewelry, your cars, you ever get tired of it? Cause I, I feel, you know, it's interesting you say that because I feel like the way people used to try to keep up with Diddy, yeah, they try to keep up with you via Instagram Absolutely. now. Yeah, but you know, uh, I'm just, I don't even be lying and doing all this extra stuff about money. I'm just happy to be in the money category. You know how everybody want to be at the top. I'm just happy to be in that category. I want, you know, too many people don't live this life. So now a couple you know. of a couple of days ago, we had a whole discussion about you and Joe Button, and yeah. and actually, a Joe man- Button's is corny as shit and always been corny <laughs> as shit and always commenting on shit and they never did. Shit. I don't be knowing how. See, I be looking at this. I be looking at all the dudes that be. T- now, what the hell did you do? You're a rapper. You can't talk. You was just crying, talking about you going crack some crazy. Shit. You can't comment. I seen Envy hugged up with his girl all weekend. Yep. You think I'm want to comment under your? Why you all hug? That look good. You look. What you want me to be around? I don't know what's going on nowadays. We supposed to be gay because you're a street rapper? I gave him donkey today for that this morning because I just got back. So Are I, you supposed to be gay though? I just don't understand. Like you know, Joe's beating women. Yeah. You know, oh my and God. women have talked about it. Yeah. So he's he don't he don't understand a guy treating his girl good. Like he just yeah, don't get it. That's what the hell's wrong with you, boy? <laughs> Well, first of all, don't be on no podcast comment. To, I'm cool. You not cool. You can't tell me what people want to see about me. I I make niggas want to have girlfriends. You make niggas don't want to have girlfriends because you did it wrong. You can't be on no, what's it called they on? His podcast? Uh, yeah, podcast. I, we don't even know what a podcast is. Hey, we, we have podcasts. Don't podcast. be telling us way. what's cool. <laughs> hey, <laughs> now. That's your line of thing. You're going to have, a, you're gonna have a, a podcast pretty soon. You're going to be the owner. <laughs> But you know, I just sound like Weren't you can't cool tell that? us what's cool. No, I, cool I don't even you bought know Joe show. Buttons. No, I bought him out on the strength. I bank. Uh, there was Slaughterhouse. That was a package deal. That wasn't for uh, package deal. Joe Buttons. <laughs> deal. But that I, was for the other ones, whoever cool that be doing their thing. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I always say that I like guys who could be how they are and street and all that, but they all should treat yeah, their women that's well. That's like you telling me I can't ride the Skywalker because uh, I'm a street dude. Or I can't ride a skateboard. Yeah, we do whatever we want. We determine what's cool. You were, know what I'm saying? Were you shocked by his comments? Like, you're like, where that came no, from? No, I just was one day, we just was, you know, we be watching all that, me and my homies. And yeah, nobody wants to see this whole dog up looking like a, what? Hold up, who the f- is you talking to? You don't look like you don't talk to me like that. When have you ever been cool? Yeah, now I was confused. You, when? Wild, you know you wild out to pump it up. Whole verse. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I was on. But I ain't even trying to like disrespect dude. But don't like dudes like that can't come at me. I be feeling like, who are you to say this? Like, why do people like you think you're like so bold about saying your opinion? You ain't never did shit in rap. You tell me I ain't gonna sell this. I ain't gonna do more than. You don't know what I'm gonna do. I would never. If one of y'all start, I don't know what y'all gonna do. If y'all wanted to own the building here, I can't tell you you ain't gonna own the building. You know, I heard I the podcast. Know. His producer was very right. His producer was like, I think Meek's gonna do two hundred plus. Yeah, he Joe believed said, that. You know, some a like few people. There's some people from the East Coast that seen my stretch. Like a lot of people, like they be saying a little. I've been in the game like five years since I was twenty three, but I had a stretch before that. I had a run before that that was like a five year run. It was on a lower, way lower scale, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I was inclined and I ain't never declined. That's what nobody ain't really paying attention to. Over the years I've been knowing I ain't declined yet. We still moving forward. 
you know, opening new doors. Now, you, how do you are you going to give Joe some bars? Because he said that you can't see him on the rap tip. <laughs> lyrically, yeah, can't lyrically. see him. How, though? <laughs> I make, I get 80,000 just to walk on the stage and do what I do. And you're talking about I ain't f***ing with you. But you know what they're going like to say? They're going to say, just what? rap, Meek. Forget the money. Yeah, and that's rap. what I do. Go in there and rap. That's all I do is go in the club and rap. Some old sh that's from like two, from 2013 and something like that. So you can't, I don't. We don't believe that. We don't understand that. I ain't even going to get into numbers, but how? I don't even know how people say that. Can y'all tell me how? So ball for ball, you got something for Joe? Would you write something or you just... No, I don't want to battle Joe. This the whole thing. It wasn't a battle. I just was talking sh back. Don't be talking about... Let me speak my opinion about this little weirdo. What we call him? A noodle talking crazy about me. <laughs> I think I saw Coon Philly say, see, this is the problem. This ain't a rap battle. Yeah, that's what Tox said. He said, that's the problem. We ain't talking about no rapping. That's not talking about me and my girl on this podcast. And who posted some the crazy video shit. of him falling down the stairs? Who you showing? Me? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I be bitten though. I don't be serious on the like I wanna fight Joe Buns. Yeah, you said you was joking. Yeah, but no, nah, you can't. Now how do you move differently with your girl? Because of course you, you're dating Nicki Minaj and I just do it. It gotta I be want. different. I just do what I want. We do what we want. We don't really be worrying about what people be talking about. Because mm -hmm. the minute you let that happen, that's the minute, you know, it's over. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's probably harder for her as a woman at first, and you said this too, when she went on Angie Martinez's show, you guys were dating, but she didn't want to put it out there yet. Yeah, you Because you do as a woman worry what are people gonna think. Yeah, that's okay. women. Me, I'm a, you know, I don't give a, f I don't care what <laughs> they be talking. I'd be knowing the internet ain't real life. We be arguing all the time mm -hmm. about comments. People like, look what this nigga. I'm like, man, go to his page, man. They got on some, uh, some bullshit on, mm -hmm. basically. 10 followers or 100, you know, they ain't the people that be. I don't take opinions from people like that. Well, you know, uh, today. Your family members ain't even following you. You got 15 <laughs> Your family people. Members. I don't want your opinion if you ain't got shit. Now, on social media today, they saying that the reason you sold 200,000 records is because of Nicki. So it's the Nicki Minaj effect. So the reason I've been jumping on these jets and rocking all this ice and walking around with all the motherfucking money because of Nicki, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's been like that, though. Like, I don't, I, don't be I don't be understanding when people be saying that. Like, before Ross, before Nicki Minaj, anybody, I was in my city on the front of 25,000 every year singing word for word mixtape. I was before Ross. I was getting about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a show. When Ross came through, I was getting more and more a show. You know what I mean? I, I'm getting older, and things is just going up. I, how, I how ain't never decline. I don't know why people be saying that. I don't be declining. Everything is just even or forward. Ain't nothing never go backwards with Meek Mill. Now, how did you meet Nick? How did y'all first start initially talking? Like, what was the you know, first No, we thing? just was busting it up. The same way you, how you and your girl meet. Mine was 16. <laughs> they, meant high, they meant high school. They meant high school. <laughs> Mine was high school. I meant high school. You getting in like, deep ass details like that. You know, but we just was building. <laughs> you know, we just building, you know, timing and everything. Timing is like everything even on this album. Mm -hmm. Like, it's timing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Timing, she had things going on in her life. I had things going on. So, you know, we just connected. Mm -hmm. Now you you both had to cut some people off to date each other. How did you tell those other women? Like, did you send out messages like, look, just so y'all know, I'm I ain't here. had no girlfriend, so I ain't had to really cut nobody off. Really, I just slowed down. I got locked up, so mm -hmm. it really slowed me down from a lot of stuff. But I ain't cut nobody off. Dealt with a few good women. They was good to me. I was good to them. Mm -hmm. It just was, I was doing something different at the time. Like, right, because you know? sometimes people gotta send out that message, like, listen, you know, I gotta tell you, I'm in a relationship now, so please respect that. Nothing, just yeah, it was just. Bye. Everybody doing their own thing. <laughs> now, now, was you and uh, Safari ever cool? Because it's just meme. Yeah, he was cool, but you, y'all better not. I'm telling y'all, I don't. <laughs> when I see talking to Nicki, y'all rappers and stuff, I don't. I know you try to know my girl. I know what you were trying to do. I don't act like you cool. This is cool, but you know, Envy, you know how this go, right? Yeah. You seen the meme I'm talking about where it's like all the wife away. Have you seen yeah. the meme where it's all of them together? And it says, yeah. Envy's, Envy's in actually it. in the picture. It, it says, be careful, your replacement could be right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be real like that, though. Oh, man. But not, not saying like that, but you know, just, mm -hmm. I don't be looking at them like they my homies. If you don't like talk to me on the phone, you ain't never been in a house with me, been chilling with me, like on a one on one. So y'all wasn't friends, friends. Just a cool dude, you know. Yeah. We ain't even the same type of people, you know what I'm saying? So you just a cool dude, you rap like. It was like, I just know I ain't gonna be looking at n none of these rappers and nobody in the industry and be like, no, nah, that's my man. He won't try. And yeah, it is. You know how I go. The rumor was that you snitched on 
um, scaff to her and yeah. told yeah. told her that he was getting, yeah, he was cheating, so he was getting kicking, head. Yeah, he was kicking his back. I ain't doing allegedly. no bunch of what, Dame Dash calling on the show. <laughs> Chatty Patty. <Chatty> <laughs> But we told you where it came from. But though. you know they be doing a lot of talking, man. Listen, <laughs> handle your business, man. And if you want something, man, make sure you fight for that shit before shit get critical. And that's for all niggas when you dealing with some young dudes that's getting money. Your girl might flip on you one day, boy. You better <laughs> handle your business before they run into a dream chaser so and how do you run around with Meek and Nikki and it be crazy. She don't never turn back. That's how I be. You know how I go. So how do you handle it when dudes come approach Nikki? Do you put the, your hand on their shoulder? Like no, does. I don't really, I don't really be doing that. Nobody don't be playing with me like that. I ain't him. I'm, it's a whole new ball game right here. Don't really disrespect. You know, somebody me. played with me over the weekend and did that to my wife. And then when I when I put my hand on my wife's shoulders, the dude was gay, and I felt so crazy. Yeah. Wait, I what felt happened? So crazy. That somebody was talking to my wife just a little extra, a little too long. Mm -hmm. I put my my hand on my wife's shoulders. Like, ah, right, enough. It just happened to do was gay, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I felt. Crazy. Yeah. But you know, nobody don't really be playing with me like that because I ain't really play with you. I ain't going to disrespect you. But, you know, if you do play with me, I'm going to send the hit squad dream chase to uh, scoop your baby mamas out, your, your girl, all that. We're going to terrorize you on that. That's how we're going to do it. We're but work-wise, she got to be around other dudes like in the studio and you're not always going to, you yeah, know. Yeah, I got a certain respect for you. If I got a certain level of respect for you, I ain't going to be really... I won't even be tucking you and be cuffing you if I gotta think of you like that all day. Mm -hmm. And you know, if we ever made a decision like that, it, that'd be our own decision. We'll just go our own ways, I guess. Everybody know how that go. All right. Now, the, the album seems like, you know, I would say this is a success thus yeah. far. And you said you would put something out really quickly if this album does well. Yeah, I'm coming right back. You know, I just took a long time off. Usually, I stay consistent. Even when I got, I got the mixtapes, I keep them coming, like, mm -hmm. back to back. This time around, we ain't been taking no dry spots no more. Right, so coming right back. Now, Streets are asking for a, a future Meek Mill mixtape. You think yeah. that's going to happen? That's possible, man. Future got a lot of songs together that's in the tuck that's ready to go. Mm. So, you know, Future, I, that's the only person I listen to right now, really on some, like, my favorite artist right now. So I love to do that. I saw you say that on Angie's show. What what about Future, like, inspired you? Because you were East Coast, dude. He, he just down be south. talking. He just be talking the right stuff. The stuff he be saying, like, he be talking, like, how we let this money get between us, how we let these... Chicks get between us, how we let these, that's the life we live, like everything he be talking, like this, it sound like he talking directly to us, so you know, that's what we came to, too. like I, some people be getting to mix up when I be saying I don't listen to people, I just be saying that they don't be talking about what I'm talking about at the time, so they don't inspire me what I'm doing in my life, like, mm -hmm. Future, he ain't the best lyricist, Kendrick Lamar and them, they dope lyricists, he ain't the best lyricist in the world, but what he talking about and the wave he on right now, he just talking to me, it's like even Days Loaf, I listen to Days Loaf. The I wave is just there. Now, why, why Dej Loaf? Because you said she just Kendrick be talking some real nigga shit. That's how I feel. She be talking some real shit. She I gotta hear more records. I, I don't hear. Y'all gotta listen to a mixtape, the first one. Right. I listen to that. I came. I thought she was just a one hit wonder when I was in jail. She came out when I was in jail. I used to hear "Try Me." Everybody used to be telling me about that song. So, uh, you know, when I came home, I got her mixtape. She was just going in talking. Should I be talking? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After the BET Awards, it was a rumor that came out that um that Dej Loaf and Nicki Minaj were getting it in and you was in there watching it. Yeah, no, I, I ain't hear that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I hear that. You didn't hear that one? Yeah. Getting what in? Oh, uh, hold on. Let me pull this up for you since you ain't here. I ain't never you get know, a Dej Loaf is allegedly is, she likes females and men. <laughs> I ain't hear that rumor. <laughs> you said what? Right. I ain't hear that one. I ain't hear that one. Hold on, let me pull it up. I ain't hear that one. You got that one. It had to be a credible rumor. I'm not going to say it. I mean, I didn't believe it. It better be like a site we know Angela just coming out with some like this. I ain't see that on Baller. I ain't see that on TNT. I ain't see that nowhere. Here it is. Oh. What website? Hold on. Just name the name first, though. You guys keep talking amongst yourselves while I pull it out. All right. Oh, not out. No, this guy. This guy. No. Now you an East Coast artist through and through, but I always hear a lot of Pac influence in your music. Yeah. Even on this album, you got the uh, All Eyes on You ambitions. Why? Why is Pac such an influence? Uh, Pac is a real one. He a real one from the West Coast. I don't. I ain't no geographical dude. It don't really matter where you come from. Like, you can be from the West. You can be from M Mars. Mm -hmm. If you just be on what I'm be on, and you inspire me, and you know I'm saying I'm just gonna give off that energy back. So you don't hear East Coast artists talk like that. Like you don't hear East Coast artists say, "Yo, I, Future in, inspires me," or "Dej Loaf inspires me." They they usually keep it New York centric on this on this side. I ain't from New York. I'm from Philly. Philly. Right. Right. So here you I go. go. Allhiphop.com. But what is that? It says Nicki Minaj wanted a piece of 
Who that? All Dej Love. Music. It says, alleged, yeah, allhiphop.com. Allegedly, Nicki Minaj and Dej Love locked themselves in Nicki's trailer with Meek Mill minutes before Nicki needed to be on stage. <laughs> it has Meek been said life, that award <laughs> show staff, <laughs> hold on, hold on. That's some funny <laughs> said you're gonna be laughing at that right there. That award show <laughs> staff <laughs> had to unlock the trailer and caught the two making out. Damn. <laughs> and Meek was in there. I don't know why the rumble Dej Love blue ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. What the fuck? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, anyway, I didn't make it up. Just so you know, it was on all hip hop. Yeah. Now you, you and Jay Z are cool, and you, you know, you're always open about wanting to be bigger than Jay. What, what does he say to you about that? Yeah, he respect it. Everybody respect that. If somebody don't even respect that from you, they ain't really got no real love for you. Right. And you say it respect. That's like me having Lil Snoop, and Lil Snoop want to be bigger than me, and I'm just like, you can't be bigger than me. Mm -hmm. I want you to be bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that probably keep Jay on his toes too. Yeah, of course. I I, I be looking at them young boys. That be some young boys from Philly that be coming out. They be spitting. I be on their YouTube, on their Instagram. Oh yeah, this little one coming. Little core, he coming. Fat jeans, he come. Such a such. You know what I'm saying? I be watching. You know what I'm saying? That's keep me motivated. Now, what did Rick Ross say to you when he seen these um album sales? Ross, I talked to Ross yesterday. He just got out. He was happy. As he wasn't even talking about jail no more. Man, listen, we feel good. You know what I mean? You in a new space. I mean, take it and run, do your thing, keep your foot on their neck. He, he, he wasn't even talking about the case no more. Mm -hmm. It was all about that. You know, I'm just happy to see you home, back with his family. Right. Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, Lil Snoop has such an impact on the Dream Chasers because I always see y'all in y'all tweets with like hashtag RIP. Yeah, that was our Lil young Snoop. boy. He was like 17, you know what I'm saying? We like 25, 20. That was our young boy. We was like raising him for that year. Mm -hmm. He out traveling across America with us. It's like him and Chino and him, they like our little brothers, so. You know, some happened to them. It's like us. You know what I'm saying? That one yeah. song you put out when it was uh, Recipe Snoop, Recipe Chinks. Yeah, Miss My Dogs. Miss My Dogs. That was a that record was a very harsh record because you was powerful. You, you were saying R.I.P. to them, but then you were saying, I'm going to kill y'all. I'm going to kill y'all too. <laughs> if I find out who did it. Yeah, that's how we be rocking though. You know, that's how it be. Like, some people be like, like when my dad died as a kid growing up from like five years old, man, I used to be like, I want to kill this person that did this to my dad. You know, as time go by, you don't really. You kind of let it go, but that's where we come from. That's what our heads think. You know, that's what we see. When you turn on the TV, you see war when people die and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody do something to America, what's going to happen? Bombs away. Yeah, yeah they're going to bomb. So, you know, we got the same mentality. That's what we've been seeing all our life. But, you know, I just be expressing myself and just saying what my mind really think. Not saying that I'm really just going to kill nobody or do nothing crazy. But, you know, at the time when I first heard that happen, that's what my mind was thinking. Now, also with the police, you've been effed up by the police before, and there's a lot of kids, a lot of teens that follow you are getting effed up by the police. What do you tell the kids to to, to try to avoid that? Uh, stay out the way, too, man. I can't tell, like, you can't be on the corner 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning with a hoodie on with your hands on your hoodie with your hoodie low, and then expect the cops not to point no gun at you when they roll up on you on a late night. You know what I'm saying? You know how I go? Just move accordingly. People know how to move. You know, in the streets, you can't just walk. I know you can't walk past my block 12 at night with your hoodie on your hands in your pockets. Mm -hmm. People's going to be on you, you know what I'm saying? The cops right. going to be on you. Just move different, you know what I'm saying? And stay out the way. A lot of people, they don't really know how to stay out the way. Find something to do. Like, in the streets, like most kids, at like 16, we start getting high, hanging in the streets. We ain't really got nothing to do. We really quit playing ball. So, you know, it's time in the day. You end up standing on the corner and being in the way of the police. Get out the way, first of all. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really in the way of the police. When, I, when I'm in front of a cop, I'm either getting pulled over or having them escort me somewhere. It ain't really me just... I ain't knowing I could go hang on the corner with my homies back, but I don't put myself in them situations no more because I got so many responsibilities. I don't even play like that. Were you able to move out of Philly? I know one time they were keeping yeah, you Yeah, I still got to live in Philly, bro. Still got to live in Philly. Yeah, I live other I places, but I got to have a house in Philly. Okay, you have a house there. But you can, if you can move, would you want to move to L.A.? Yeah, I, I would just want to move, period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want to move my girl, you know, my, my son, family, they don't really want to live in Philly no more, but they waiting on me. You know what right. I'm saying? So, you know, it's just. How much longer you got? Uh, I think like two, three years or something like that. Eesh. But I think it was, like, the way it's going, like, I've been on this for eight years. I think if I do good, I'll be trying to ask or help mm -hmm. get it cut shorter, maybe in two years, a year, anything. You feel like jail helped you? Because it seemed like before you went to jail, you was jail wilding. Helped me. It was like y'all was riding jail the streets of Philly looking for trouble. I want to give a special shout out to my judge because jail helped me 100%. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some of them situations, it was it was crazy. I used to be mad at the time because the jail, when you sitting there and you don't know when you coming home, it's like a 
it's a tool on your mind. You got hundreds thousands of dollars in bills. You got family to take care. I got not even no money. I got a son. You know what I'm saying? I got mm-hmm. three old son. He ain't, he not even familiar with his dad not being around. You know what I'm saying? I'll come seeing his dad in the building and gotta leave. So you know it's just stressing when you don't know what you're doing. When you know what you're doing, and you know what I mean, it it, it help it help have your mind together because you like I'm gonna do this time and then I'm gonna get out and get right. That was the only thing, but you know it helped me. I was lost. I was I was at a point where I was like trying to like keep it real with the streets and still trying to win with rap at the same time. And you know, that ain't what I really want to do. So you know, God took me out that position. I ended up being in jail for five months. Came back and started doing what I supposed to do. You know, and the blessings been coming ever since. When you was locked up, Louis V. Gutter came over to me. I was in Philly. Yeah. Um, at Lashawn McCoy's charity boat ride yeah and he was like i want to come on the show i want to tell my piece about meek mill and i was like well he's locked up that's not you know yeah we don't even do that in philly part. too like that like see nowadays like street dudes don't be talking about going and do no interviews and this ain't even no disrespect for them because i don't got no beef with him all that is over street dudes we don't be doing this blogging stuff when stuff be happening and going and talking on like when has this ever that. been cool like like on the internet you see Bobby Smurdy and them get locked up. You see just laughing about it. All right, you, you know, some of the memes going to be funny and shit sometimes. Everything, you can't be serious. But that ain't funny. I seen people laughing about Frost going to jail or Diddy. That ain't never been funny. I don't know what people been, what got into the game, the culture. That ain't never been cool. And when it start being cool, somebody lose their life. First of all, we don't know if they innocent or guilty. So we don't even know if they belong in jail away from their family. And when has it been funny to laugh at somebody being locked in a cage 24-7? Because if your dad, your mom, or your kid was locked in, you want people to be laughing. You know what I'm saying? Well, he was saying he wanted to squash it and oh, yeah, tell but, his side. But then I saw some video still, footage though, of, of him. Don't be trying your... to, like, use, don't. That's what the people ain't going to never win. Like, when you, if you got to come up here, like, if I had to come up here and talk about Nicki, man, my life would be over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be up here hoping, like, yo, I hope they don't keep asking me about Nicki all day. I don't be trying to. I ain't you, trying you to do 55 interviews talking about Nicki because <laughs> I'm me. <laughs> I've been me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, like, even with, like, the industry, you know, we got to do radio and stuff. I don't be feeling like saying the same thing over and over and over and over. I be right. in my head like, yo, I'm about to just start saying anything in the new <laughs> interview. Just get <laughs> <shit> popping. <laughs> but, you know, the truth of the matter is sometimes you have to because different people hear different things. So somebody might have never gotta heard do you. I don't got to do nothing. Do the weekend do radio all the time? Be Absolutely telling y'all not. what his no. life like? <laughs> he's still doing being successful. And he's but on your I, album. I ain't saying like nothing. I just don't be like keep telling the same stories over and over and over. You know how many times I told these stories? Your question's a little different. You know, y'all pros well, at come this. come place, truthfully, mate. Yeah, you just come <laughs> here from the beginning. Yeah, of course. But, but we were on vacation, vacation. Yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. But, you know. Uh, now, you said you, you made some comments about uh, the hood and how, you know, you, you shouldn't play the hood. This is after Chink's death. But then you shot a video in the hood the next week. Yeah, I said you shouldn't play the hood. I'm in the hood working, doing a video. I'm in mm-hmm. the video. Like, now, it's a difference between I'm saying you can't play the hood and don't ever come. If you don't never come to your hood or your community, where you going to go? Where am I going to go? I don't work 24-7. Like, I got a grandma that lives. I don't go to my grandma's house no more. Mm-hmm. I'm going to still go to my grandma's house. It ain't that serious. I ain't got no beef in the street. But when it comes to, like, are right, you going to the strip club tonight and then going to the next club? Or I ain't outside 2, 3 in the morning riding around in them streets. If I'm outside somewhere, I'm downtown somewhere. It's just different. I'm basically saying, like, I, got, I just got a different approach. In every interview, like, big interviews like these, I be making sure I be wanting to get it off where I be saying, like, like, my new thing with the uh, youth is, like, I be saying, like, the new gangster is, like, moving your mom out the street and, like, mm-hmm. better in your family. It's Absolutely. easy. It's easy to shoot mm-hmm. somebody. It's easy to go to jail for life. It's easy to get smoked. It's easy to do that. It ain't easy, like, to move your family out the hood. You know, where we come from, we ain't never been, like, you don't get a compliment for easy things. Anybody could, any of y'all could walk outside and shoot somebody and take somebody's life and go to jail for life. Where do you win that? You know, we was young kids. We was brought up. Well, in my era, we was brought up to think you playing with guns, you selling drugs, you doing sh- bash. You get complimented for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, that gets stuck in kids' head. You know, my new thing, I'm, I, I, when I was locked up, I used to have these guys come see me. It was like Damian Jones, Chad Lasseter. There was like some activists uh, from Philadelphia, mm-hmm. but, you know, they, they in the prison system, and they be like, yo, what message do you want to deliver to the kids? My thing was like, just making them recognize was if they want to use the word gangster making them recognize was really gangster because 
that ain't gangster. You get killed. You get killed young. You just die young. We ain't gonna remember you. You uh, kill somebody and go to jail for life. You just went to jail for life. You ain't really do nothing good. You know what I'm saying? So I be trying to break it down to them young boys in the hood. First of all, there be a lot of killing going on over petty shit. I see people get killed over 800 all The stuff I be hearing about, they be like, I went from saying people get killed over 800 dollars to giving somebody an 800 dollar tip. You know what I'm saying? They don't really add up. And we can't really be, everybody can't focus on the cops just killing maybe 100 black people a year when black people killing people a million miles an hour. Focus on that too. That's that's a serious thing. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell. You know, it's some kids. I can't tell sh kids in Chicago don't carry a gun if, if it's 55 of kids on the block that got a gun. You know what I'm saying? You might not do it and, and get hurt or your, your environment might be called for that. You know what I'm saying? We don't know, but. Me, I, I just ain't with that stupid shit, and I don't believe that little kids should be running around believing that stupid shit. Mm -hmm. That you should be riding for a hundred guys, and when you go to jail, ain't nobody gonna answer your call. Everybody's broke. Nobody ain't got no money for your lawyer, so you gonna end up falling out with them by the time you're in your tenth year of state doing life. Only person you probably call your mom if she's living and not on drugs. You know what I'm saying? It, ain't, it don't really make sense. Let's start making sense out of. Shit. Of course, don't 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 never get it wrong. I'm some of my raps gonna be ignorant. I came came up in the ignorant ass era. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I seen some terrible things. So you might have some terrible things in my raps, but at the same time, there's gonna be some common sense in there to let the kids know that this shit's serious. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? This ain't no just go throw your life away overnight. Like even Bobby, I gave Bobby three hours the day before he got booked. He came to see me in Philly. I talked to him for three hours about, yo, watch who you be having around you, man. That shit, they bring a lot of things, man. Watch how you moving, man. Move a little different. You don't got to have 50 dudes with you. Mm -hmm. I know all 50 of them, man, which is probably 15 real ones that's really like dead at heart. Maybe five, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but just watch your little movements and surroundings because it's different now. You bringing attention. Like, and like Bobby Smurda, he's a kid. Mm -hmm. Like I don't look at them as dangerous. I can come around. I don't look at them as dangerous. I look at them as kids raised in a hard environment and they come their way, you know, they might gotta be in that position. But is it true I, you told them to uh why treat his freedom like ten million dollars? Yeah, I told was that him before like, he got locked up? I told him that on a jail on a jail call. I told him that. Oh, okay. I was I'm just saying like with kids, like how that's like if we got money, like say if you got ten million dollars in cash, you gonna hide it, you gonna not tell nobody, you going mm -hmm. you gonna do everything protected. So mm -hmm. treat your freedom the same way. Like kids in our culture taught that your freedom, not nothing. Just go throw it away. Somebody beat you up, go kill them, get life in jail. No, that that was never the plan. That's never smart. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be here today if I was doing that. And I've been tested like that many a times as a kid, and I had to make a decision. This ice high laws got beat up, but I won a lot too. I ain't really tripping. I ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Would you put money on Bobby's bell? Because that's one thing everybody like. Everybody was yeah, I would give him some money to Bobby's bell, of course. But what? It depends what's going on, you know what I'm saying? I got I got real family members in jail right now. Mm -hmm. I got little cousins in jail right now that don't got no lawyer. They did dumb shit that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. You just can't come to me and just be like, you can't catch an armed robbery and be like, yo, I need a lawyer. I feel, we don't rob people in that family. We never did that, you know what I'm saying? So I got real family members in jail. So, you know, it'll be about my family members first, but if I could help Bobby, of course I would help. How's he doing? You say you spoke to him. How's he doing? He in jail, you know what I'm saying? He's like, <laughs> miniature hell. He's never right, happy. <laughs> yeah. That was so stupid. It's man, like he in a little miniature shut up, up, man. He's in jail for a <laughs> Yeah, first of all, he could sound as good as he went over the phone. I know how he feel. Mm -hmm. I just was in there. He in mini hell right now, you know what I'm saying? So it's rough. I know it is. Is right? there any chance that he said that he, he could possibly make bail or come out or nah, it's not? Who? He got bail now. Who, Bobby? Yeah. yeah. I think Bobby got a bail, like a $2 million yeah. bail. This record company, I guess they ain't standing on it or something, you know what I'm saying? And that's come from people not believing in you. Like, right. uh, unfortunately, like these people that you get money with, you can't get them confused. They don't, they don't love you. Business. Now, do you yeah. get you get hot with your people when stuff like that happens at your video shoot when the dude got hit with the gun? Do you be like, man, what are y'all doing? Yeah, I'm really mad at the dudes that came around there because I really, I tweeted. I Instagram like, yo, if you got shit going on in the street, don't really come around. There's going to be a lot of kids out here, mm -hmm. stuff like that. If you feel anything, stay home, man. Right. You know, everybody mixing in because Meek Mill out here, you know what I'm saying? I was almost actually done. I was about to just get out that block in the next three minutes, but, you know, something popped up. I be, I be kind of upset, but 
I understand. I understand the streets. Stuff be happening in the streets, and you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Right. Now you also tweeted you gonna show y'all friends. I'm gonna show y'all friends how bad you treated them when y'all was on the way. Oh, basically saying that you know, like rappers. Most rappers when they on their way out, when they like falling off, mm -hmm. they tend to turn back to the hood and be like, "Yeah, I'm on a block. I'm with my homies. This, then, the third. But when you just was all the way lit, you was with like two people and a security guard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes like people with famous, like famous people. And these guys I be running, they they tend to treat their friends like they down here. Like my uncle still, mm -hmm. my uncle, my uncle still can scream at me because I got a million dollars and I provide for them. He can still call a shot. I'm still the nephew, you know what right. I'm saying? It don't make me the uncle now because I got money y'all. It don't make you the the friend that you can talk to people any kind of way and do anything you want because when you ain't got no friends and no family, what you gonna do? Mm -hmm. People say I, I bring this to the table. You be sitting at the table by yourself, food <laughs> going to waste. Mm -hmm. And you just gonna be there by yourself, you know what I'm saying? People, I know, I know for a fact that other people in the industry, I know they watch my friends and be like, damn, me, they don't care about the car. I don't care about how you got eight cars or four cars, you don't let nobody drive it. It's just sitting in the garage until it get old. This that. You know, some people are car people that love their people and don't let people drive their car. <laughs> we understand how that go, but we all know that hungry be starving, can't be on buddy pass, can't do nothing, they can't make it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know that how I feel is I ain't, I don't act like to my friends I'm throwing you a favor you know what I'm saying if you if you if you helping me mentally you could just be talking to me as my friend and I feel like you you helping me out so mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you out you know what I'm saying that's how I always been and growing up I ain't have never had nobody do nothing for me so you know I be wanting to change that I like I like I like to change that I don't like that savage life with your friends I'm the type dude if I got like money in my pocket I buy something to eat. My friend gonna get half if that's all we got, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying just be taking care of no leeches that ain't doing nothing. No, you you get you deserve nothing if you a leech. That's how I go. But your true friends and the people that you value, make sure you treat them how they treat you. Quit all the music, the business, all that stuff. Treat your friends and your family right. You know what I'm saying? That's a good segue for you, Absolutely. Charlie. Huh? A hundred dollars. Oh yeah, I'm I'm you know me two hundred sixteen. <laughs> I'm gonna get to that in a second. But um. <laughs> Cause I'm a little, I'm a little, I need a little cash. This is a hundred dollars. <laughs> do it. This is a hundred. You I got know a you job, boy. Feel you, got it. you lit. This is a hundred. You lit. lit. Now with the new album, I see some people saying, you know, they like the album, but they feel like they wanted more Meek, like they wanted more records, like Triller, some more classic. They say like, the Jump Out the Face seemed like a Future record. The Rico sound like a Drake record. <sighs> what the hell do they want? I don't know. <laughs> I can't. If you, if you saying that. Sh you ain't no Meek Mill fan. First of all, a lot of these niggas, they don't even know, they can't even name a DMX song. Like, when people be commenting, man, I seen one time, who brought Missy out at the Super Bowl or something? All Take these fair. people was yeah. like, yo, Missy, who is this, a They're new like, artist? Who's that new artist? Yeah. You yeah. cannot, the people that be commenting on hip hop don't even know the history. They don't even know what's going on. They just decided to jump in at the last minute, I guess, and be trying to, you can't comment on that. Who are you? My real fans won't say that. I thought I it was a nice, very well balanced album. Yeah, I with just something think for everybody. I just no think it's, it's just different lanes on there for everybody. Oh, yeah. I, I love too. the song with Swiss. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that. I like that. Yeah. I love the song with that's Chris like Brown. That's like some East like Coast hip hop. That's drum. That's all. Jump out the face. Some South trap. Mm -hmm. uh, Check is like trap mixed with East Coast at the same time. Weekend is just that dark yeah. sound with Weekend. You know he sound good. Uh, all lies on you. Radio smash. Ambitions as a rider, that pain, cold hearted, soul heart music. Uh, Did you think about making radio records? Were you like, okay, I gotta make yeah, something? Uh, it seems like you're more open to that this time around, making radio records. Yeah, Nikki helped me with I that. Knew That's it. what comes from having <laughs> a girl as a hustler. You know, we mm -hmm. went back and forth about like, man, you need a radio record. I'm like, yo, man, I'm trying to crush the streets. I don't really, I try that later, but let me get this right. Let me get my, I'm a boss right in my, you know what I'm saying? She was like, no, you need a radio record because. You know, that just puts you in a different light and people look at you a different way and put you in a conversation and certain conversations within the business, you know what I'm saying? But if, if, if your record's already playing on radio, don't it make it a radio record? Like if the intro's playing... No, I make it a radio then. record when that thing playing all day on the radio and it's uh, doing numbers down there on that chart when that thing making noise, you but know? Because if that's the case... Percolator is a big radio record. They come on that doo doo brown. <laughs> they come on in every city, every day across America. You know what I'm saying? But you did two hundred thousand, so we don't even know if those records worked yet. Cause you yeah, it don't even matter because I ain't, I had a like single crazy. out like five days before my album come out, so it ain't really like come down to that. It came down to keeping the people interested in you, 
timing, you know what I'm saying? Um, hard work, talent, everything at once, you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't just me. I ain't gonna say it was a it was a complete package that just happened to be on time, you know, it was blessings from God. I said, you know, I came home from jail. I was talking to my homies the other night. I said, man, I came home from jail. Nicki Minaj, my girlfriend now, just did 200000 first week. The money is rolling in. Got the Puma deal. The Some real blessings coming over the top. Me, you know what I'm saying? Relationships too, man. Wifey's always right. If she said do a radio record, your ass did two of them. That, the wifey is always right. Yeah, I believe that with you, though, because I be seeing his girl <laughs> yeah, with yeah. the most expensive shoes on. Expensive she posted something band. today that I was I know, like, wow. Yeah. Wifey is always right. That's right. She deserves it. Would y'all yeah, do a mixtape right. together or an album, you and Nikki? Yeah, we would one day. We ain't never really talk about doing We talked about doing a mixtape like a few months ago. We're going to do a mixtape, but we ain't never talk about it again. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's That'd be good for the tour. I mean. That would definitely be possible. The tour next week, so all that's really over. I mean, with. while you're on the tour, you know, y'all could probably knock that out quick. And What are you going to do with all those songs that you did before you went to jail? I'm going to come with some new heat. I'm going to just, that's going to be the next out? batch. right back? Yeah, some of it's going to be in the next batch. I don't know when it'll be. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be soon. It's going to be real soon after we get this out of the way. We right back. We going to flood. I want to do a Lil Wayne deal. When Lil Wayne was just had his foot down on the game mm-hmm. neck for years straight, back to back. Do you feel like God is really blessing all the trap? <laughs> I know he blessing me. <laughs> this guy. You know, I just call it keep. When you be right, when you just be righteous to the world, man, you just get blessed. Mm-hmm. I be walking up to people that need money and just give them money. I just My make brother, people. I need hundred dollars. <laughs> I just I try to make sure people day better and stuff like make, that. You'll make my day better if you give me hundred dollars. <laughs> I just made your day better right here with this uh, now, exclusive me... interview right here. I mean, Don't Reference do it. Club, I'm a, we lit today. I'm gonna be honest, Meek. So a lot of people have come up here and gave Charlamagne a hundred dollars. As Sharon did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cheddar to Connect did it. Who Troy was, Ave. Troy Ave gave him a hundred dollars. Better now. now. I got thirty thousand in my pocket, but I don't just no, no, give no, no men no money go, like that. The reason why you, you just shouldn't said you go around blessing people. You no, stop. hold on, hold on. The reason I'm going to tell you not to is because the the thing was they told him to buy us all breakfast and he's never done that. He, he never, keeps the money and takes it home. He had cheap They gave it to him. Oh, so they this said, ain't the breakfast club. Right. <laughs> 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 ain't no club. We appreciate you joining us. The album's in stores Congra- right now. Congratulations on everything. Congratulations. Yeah. One no, last question. If, now, what if, what if SB wanted a feature from you? <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> would you charge Might him? Might get a discount. Right. Give him a discount? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> you really are blessing people. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to make sure you bless people and stuff like that. You know how I go? This guy. Nick <laughs> Millie, we in the building. Philly, dreams worth more than money in stores right now. Nicki Minaj, print, print tour. Next week, what's that, the 16th? Mm-hmm. It's going down next week. Bike Life app. Make sure you go get that. Big, big, hey, salute on that, though. That was a big move. Now yeah, the really app's still doing money. good, too, man. You go check the charts, mm-hmm. the app up there with YouTube and Instagram and them. So, you know. It's an app for the kids, you know. I do, I do like the bike life thing. That's my world. I found something connected to me and made a game out of, you know, and the people feeling it right now. You the first rapper to do that. The yeah, it was, yeah. I, I'm a hustler, you know. what I'm saying, you know how Diddy broke through with the Ciroc, Hole broke through with the with the Cloverline. I might be the guy, you know. It's an app era now. It ain't the yeah, ain't who no put you on that? Who turned you on to the tech world? Who turned you on to the tech world? Me, I, I came up on the internet. If you watch me, that's why I see. That's another thing too. Like right now, it's a lot of young cats in the streets. That's I talked to my man on the phone, Sam Sneak, last night. He was like, "Yo, people in the streets are like real inspired from you from the interviews, the stuff you're talking about, and stuff like that." But a lot of people believe in me because like I came up on the internet. You, I was watching yesterday, me a little video. You can see me freestyling when I'm 13 with mm-hmm. the nappy braids and the big T-shirt. That's some positions that people are in now. So mm-hmm. when they see that, and then they see. Step by step by step, year after year, me in this position. Now they can see how I go because usually we don't really see when people get right. on. We just see they people on. think it happened overnight. We like, don't see or, AI. No, yeah, you well, right. you know, you see some basketball players, mm-hmm. college game, but you don't see practice. You don't see mm-hmm. the things they go through in real life. And you know, I got that all on the internet. They see me step by step right. to growth. So even you, like, it's good to see. Like I saw you rapping, and Melly was behind you, and this was. Yeah, yeah like that's that's every that's like mostly everybody's dreams in the streets. Well, our culture, when you come up, you come up, you get money, you with your friends, the same people you came up with. That's like the street dream, ain't it? Kind of. So you know, the people see that and they seen it happen step by step. So they believe it. They actually, when you listen to my music, I ain't gotta be in the streets. I ain't saying I'm in the streets right now, but the stuff I'm talking about, they know that I come from that area. This is a fact. They can see it, so they believe it more. So when I'm doing things on Instagram and saying stuff, they believe it. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
a lot of guys, I don't believe them. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I don't believe a lot of the stuff these people be saying on these raps and doing. Like, I don't even be wanting to hear it. If you're talking about, gun your baby mom down, flip it. Uh, we don't want to hear that no more. Make some sense out of something. Can I get 100 that y'all was counting on that bus the other day? Uh, we don't got no money. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's the breakfast club. It's I started off out. saying I ain't giving me no money. I ain't know you was going to ask me for no money. But I go back home, yo, let me get $100. You can get yeah. Charlamagne $100. <laughs> You don't have to deal with that for the rest of your life right there. You don't even know him like that. That was your fourth time there. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club Meek Mill. Yeah, we in the belt.